Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the latest news that solar projects have been refused planning permission at the highest rate for years, and at a time when you would think energy security is rising up the national agenda. But I'd also like to discuss the government's latest musings on the potential for blackouts, because I don't know if they're playing some political games here. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So some news out today that solar farms have been refused planning permission at the highest rate for five years. As far as I can tell from the report, this seems to be partly down to the prevalence of requests for large scale farms for reasons best known to someone else, because they seem to have a harder time getting planning permission. And I'm, and I'm going to have to say the downturn in solar projects since the Tories came to power particularly annoys me because there's a cost to produce and installing the solar panels, of course. And they need replacing at the end of their lifetime, but they do last quite a while. But beyond that, it's essentially free energy. Yeah, we're not the sunniest country. We have sun. It's out there now. Naysayers also try and point out, oh, you, night time is a thing, you know. Yeah, I know, I'm an astronomer. Uh, you know, but, oh, yeah, but this is when we need a lot of our electricity for, you know, lights and things like that. Yeah, sure. Nobody's saying we get all of our electricity from solar, though it has to be said there are increasingly efficient ways to store the energy. But sure, we're talking about it as part of the solution. But even without that, we use a lot of energy in the daytime too as, as well. Businesses are mostly active in the day and consume a great deal of electricity. If we'd carried on going big with solar, as well as other renewables, our energy security would now be in a very good place. It's really this simple. The chief reason our energy bills are so high, as the government likes to remind us, is due to global pressures. On global pressures on what? Is it global pressures on the wind coming into the country or the sun coming out? No, 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 no. Global pressures on fossil fuels. Well, whose fault is it that we're still far too reliant on fossil fuels for our energy needs? The report I was reading said that the solar projects turned down last year alone could have provided the energy needs for 147,000 homes in the UK. And you think to yourself, that's in one year and that's just from solar. Think just how much self-sufficient energy we've been missing out on after 12 years of the government turning their noses up at renewables. And why have they been doing this? The same reason they do anything. They are in the thrall of corporations and they don't come much bigger or more politically active than gas and oil companies. These companies actively buy politicians around the world to trip up efforts to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. They've been doing it for decades. They're highly skilled in these things. Earlier this week, Liz Truss made herself seem rather too eager to give the order to unleash a nuclear arsenal on some poor unfortunate in the grim charade of pretending to take national security seriously. Any government that works against efforts to be as self-sufficient as possible for key commodities and services, including energy, is not one that is providing national security but national sabotage really gets me. When it's daytime, if there's a roof without a solar panel on it, that's energy going to waste. The sun's hitting the roof, what's it doing? Nothing. If there was a solar panel there, what's it doing? Generating electricity. So because it's not doing, that's electricity we're having to use globally sensitive fossil fuels to produce instead. And it's economically stupid as well. We get nothing from the government shilling for oil companies. What benefit do we get? but we could be getting serious economic boost by backing new, greener technology. It's in our interest on every level. We create more jobs, we get cheaper energy. We remove ourselves from some of the impacts of unstable politics from fossil fuels providers. It makes it easier for us to take a harder line on countries. We don't have to compromise so much on human rights around the world because, oh, we need them for oil. You know, countries that, that use their fossil fuel wealth to thumb their nose at international norms. We wouldn't have to do that so much. And we're addressing the climate emergency at the same time. And this solution is only likely to get to get worse under Liz Truss. You know, actually wouldn't matter so much if it's Rishi Sunak either. We both seem to be making a virtue out of climate denial. But, but Truss has actively relied upon sort from climate change deniers within the parliamentary party. You know, she, she's got them in her corner. And as bad as the situation is now, 
I fear that the issue of energy is going to be used as a, a bit of a political football while this Tory government ekes out its remaining years. Because on a slight tangent, I noticed the government have been uh, saying a few things on, on energy this week. I'll, I'll focus on their downplaying of the prospect of blackouts this winter. Although Boris Johnson also said a few things in his latest trip to Ukraine yesterday, uh, but not related to this, so I'll leave that. Now, the government suggesting that, that black we're fine, we're not going to have blackouts, is that's good because we don't want drops in energy supplies. I certainly don't. Be right, pain in the ass for me. But they've been saying a couple of things that I found curious. First, they're pointing to the fact that we have this diverse range of energy sources and we're not reliant on Russian fuel, as many European countries are. And I'm thinking, yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, it's true enough in many ways. It could be better, but it's true enough. But it does pose two follow-up questions, though. If we're so well protected from the global situation and other European countries are in so much trouble, why have our energy bills risen way higher than those of other major economies in Europe? Because I will have to mention this, Boris Johnson Ukraine was saying, oh, the reason for our high energy bills is entirely down to Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And it's like, well, no, they were going up before then, and they'd gone up quite a lot before then. But, but here's the thing, if it's entirely down to the situation with Russia, but you're also saying that we're not reliant on those supplies, why have our bills gone up? You're not drawing the link there, Mr. Johnson. You're not drawing the link. Also, if we're not reliant on Russian fuel, why haven't we stopped importing it already? We have plans, just like the EU do, to, uh, to reduce those imports uh, by the end of the year. But if we're not reliant, why, didn't we just, why haven't we already done it? I'd like to hear the answer to those questions. Second thing the government have been saying is that people should expect to use as much energy as they feel they need. No, you worry, no need for rationing. No, you, 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 you carry on, you flick the switches whenever you need. Now, this is a bit of an odd thing to say at any time from a government. Like, surely any government at any time should be encouraging people to use less energy. I mean, yeah, you, you don't necessarily need people panicking, thinking we've got a shortage uh, if they if if the government don't think we do, but even without considering considering the situation with Russia, it's in our interest for achieving net zero to persuade people to to not use energy they don't really need to use if they're able, if they're able, you know. In fact, the government could easily do this without attracting awkward questions. Like they could publicise a range of measures, have a campaign to help inform people to reduce energy use without feeling that they're doing without purely from a cost of living point of view. There have been government initiatives in the past about turning lights off when you leave a room or not using so much water when you're brushing your teeth or in the shower. Why not a campaign like this from the angle of trying to save people money on their bills? Because if they come out with a campaign on, you know, tips to save energy, like people could ask, the government, oh, is this because you're worried about blackouts then? Is this because you can't secure energy supplies? And they could just fire back. No, it's a cost of living crisis. We're trying to do everything we can to help people manage their energy bills. And how could you prove otherwise? You couldn't. But then I had a further thought. So these statements coming from the government this week, they're basically only something you would say if you were totally confident that our energy supplies this winter are going to be fine that there's not going to be blackouts. Because here's the thing, if there were blackouts and you'd said this, you're going to look like a right tit. You know, they'll be accused of being cavalier with people's lives, of taking the very predictable and predicted problems, you know, uh, not taking them at all seriously. So part of me thinks, okay, maybe officials are assuring ministers that actually all is well. Yes, is it? we've got things in place, we're good, we're fine. And it's all above board and we're not going to have energy supply problems this winter. Good. But then there's another possibility. <laughs> the government that's saying all this now is directed by Boris Johnson. On the few hours a week when he's not partying, that is. Now, we know that there is a plan amongst Johnson's allies to wait for Liz Truss to implode and then push for Johnson to become prime minister again, you know, as she crawls out the exit door. The thought occurred, what if the government, which remember is being directed by Boris Johnson at the moment, are dismissing fears about blackouts and urging people to use as much energy as they like, or at least can afford, not because they're confident they won't look like right tits in January, but because 
they're not around in January. Liz Truss is. And, and that they want Liz Truss to look like a right tit as soon as possible. Like I keep saying, Labour reckon Liz Truss will be fine for a few months. They won't be able to do anything uh, with her for a few months. But then things will unravel for a government as we head into winter. Well, it's not just opposition parties that are anticipating this with some satisfaction, but certain players within the Conservative Party as well. What if energy is being made a big political football for the Tories to fight over, while the consequences of not securing reliable and relatively cheap sources plays out across the country? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.